Vážené dámy, vážení... Ladies and gentlemen, it is well known that in its long history, conservation, heritage care, expanded gradually the subject of its interest. Conservationists were first interested in the remains of antiquity. To these were added the buildings of the Middle Ages, the Renaissance, the Baroque or the Classical period from around 1800. In the post-war period, uh, heritage sites from the first half of the 20th century became uh, subject of protection. If you look at our own Czech situation, buildings from the era of interwar functionalism began to be protected by the State Heritage Service during the 1960s. This is, uh, for example, the case of the building of the General Pension Institute in Prague or the famous Villa Tugendhat in Brno. It would seem that this process of broadening the focus of uh, heritage care would continue successfully after the victory of democracy in the former Soviet bloc countries in 1989, and that uh, valuable buildings from the post-war period would uh, therefore also become protected. These buildings, too, have aged sufficiently for us to be able to recognize their value. However, to the regret of many enthusiasts and lovers of newer modern architecture, the process of expanding the focus of conservation uh, came to a halt unexpectedly. On the contrary, in recent years, we have been witnesses of numerous de demolitions and uh, even very valuable post-war buildings have fallen victim to them. Such sad incidents occur all over the world. They are not uh, only limited to the countries of the former Soviet bloc. Almost everywhere, ideological isms uh, are being pushed through, and they lend uh, a degree of legitimacy to the demolition of valuable post-war buildings. I would like to draw our attention here to two such isms, neoliberalism and aesthetic conservatism. Neoliberalism has become the dominant ideology in the world today regardless of whether the country is ruled by the right or the left. It has a, a position of a hegemon, and this is reflected in the form of the relationship between private property and public interest. This is extremely important for conservation. The right of the owner to freely dispose of their property, for example, a valuable post-war building, could be restricted by the protection of such building, resulting from uh, the public interest. Neoliberalism, on the other hand, claims that a private owner can dispose of their property without any restrictions. That is, if they wish, they can demolish a valuable building in their possession. However, the unrestricted right to dispose of property does not completely uh, cover the nature of neoliberalism. The effects of neoliberal ideology include the fact that under its hegemony, the public interest becomes eroded. Many of us have an already encountered a situation where the competent authorities could have intervened in favor of uh, a building at risk. However, the authorities remained indifferent, passive, or even rejected calls to save it. And demolition was a result of that. From our country, I could mention the cases of the Yeshket shopping center in Liberec 
or the Transgas building in Prague. All the instances of state conservation failed here, including the Ministry of Culture. Uh, quoting the famous foreign examples of such uh, extinction of outstanding, uh, outstanding post-war buildings, we can mention uh, the Robin Hood Gardens in London, whose fate was badly affected by the English heritage. There was a case earlier this year, the demolition of the Istropolis Palace in Bratislava, which will be the subject of the talk by Henrietta Moravčíková. Nevertheless, I will share a couple of facts with you about it. When information leaked out that uh, the owners of Istropolis wanted to demolish the palace, Slovak experts and even the wider Bratislava public made great efforts to prevent this from happening. A calls for the Istropolis uh, premises to be granted the status of a monument, however, were met with uh, either an indifferent or evasive uh, response from the Slovak uh, Heritage Office, or even the statement that declaring a privately owned building a monument entails risk. So the office would rather do nothing we might want to add. None of the competent institutions in no, none of the cases mentioned have taken uh, steps toward defending the public interest even though legislation would have allowed it. And the ideology of neoliberalism always stands out as the common denominator here. The authorities in charge of conservation have accepted the neoliberal erosion of the public interest as the standard for their decision making. I am showing an image of a, the poor protection of post-war architecture but I do not want to make the picture more and more gloomy. It might uh, make us uh, feel a sense of hopelessness. Therefore, I will uh, cite a case from brave Ukraine that uh, has not yet uh, ended as badly as the cases mentioned so far. Alex Bikov uh, is able to give you the details. He's participating in this event. The owner of the remarkable brutalist department store in Kiev called Kvity Ukraini decided to rebuild it in a reckless manner and construction machinery already started to damage the building, to pull it down. However, this was met with a wave of civil resistance and the courts got involved and even the Ukrainian Minister of Culture later on intervening in its favor. This shows that the invisible hands of neoliberalism can be resisted. However, if we try to do so, it may happen that our efforts to save a valuable post-war building will be met by representatives of the second of my dangerous isms attacking it from the back, attacking us from the back. And this is aesthetic conservatism. Why should we protect post-war architecture? It doesn't deserve it. The <coughs> followers of this ism cry in these situations. They are led by the most important thinker of aesthetic conservatism, Roger Scruton. Post-war buildings, especially brutalist buildings, are not worthy of conservation, in their opinion, because they are ugly. Behind the attitudes of Roger Scruton and other aesthetic conservatives lies an effort to define generally applicable or universal principles of beauty that all people might be able to agree on. 
as Scruton says, from antiquity to the late 19th century, even architecture was guided by such principles. In the modernist era, however, they were arbitrarily abandoned and uh, um, some sort of global conspiracy of modernist architects, critics and building bureaucrats resulted in ugly and inhuman concrete monsters lurking everywhere. Real architectural beauty, according to these aesthetic conservatives, looks different from brutalist ugliness and is supposedly imagined differently by the vast majority of people nowadays. This consensus of humanity, or at least nationwide consensus, as Scruton talks about it. As a model for the restoration of true beauty in architecture, according to this British philosopher, uh, the New England town of Poundbury, designed by Leon Creer, could serve as a model. The narrow format of my paper does not allow me to respond to more than the two most troublesome aspects of this aesthetic conservative doctrine. First, Scruton accuses modernists of uh, passing off their own architectural doctrine as the only possible truth. He himself, however, clearly does the same thing. Wouldn't it be uh, more appropriate to grant both opinions uh, the right to life, both the conservatives and the modernists? And secondly, uh, Scruton's consensus of mankind or humanity, the only correct architectural beauty, is not absolute in fact. Even those ugly, brutalist buildings have their passionate lovers, enthusiasts, who cannot be suspected of being part of a modernist conspiracy. These are mostly young, uh, independent-minded people. Aesthetic conservatism is not the same as neoliberalism, which is reflected, among other things, in its relationship to the public interest, which it is not as indifferent to as neoliberalism. In many situations, however, aesthetic conservatism has already served neoliberalism, so that we could speak of uh, an alliance between the two isms. This occurred, for example, in the tragic case of Prague's Transgas building, when the Club for Old Prague, together with the wider civic public community, tried to save this building. It was told by domestic aesthetic conservatives that it was not the Transgas building, but only valuable old architecture that deserved uh, such conservation effort. From the aesthetic conservative circles then uh, came the argument that the transgas um, premises did not respect the traditional block structure of its surroundings and thus was said to be guilty. Uh, however, it was primarily the impact of neoliberalism, the unwillingness of the Ministry of Culture to defend the public interest that decided the fate of the building in the end. However, I know of cases where uh, conservative aesthetic preferences uh, directly led to the demise of valuable post-war buildings. I will mention one case from Budapest. Uh, in the 1970s, architect Virag Chaba inserted a remarkable uh, Mavir power station into the premises of the former castle in Buda. 
the technicist's style may remind us of the work of the Czech studio Sial or the architects who built Transgas in Prague at the same time. Uh, however, in 2014, the Hungarian government decided to return the Buddha premises to the way it looked like between 1867 and 1944. Chaba's power station couldn't withstand this. In 2021, its front part was demolished. And this year, it was to be replaced by a copy of a classicist house from the early 19th century. <coughs> to summarize my contribution, I must conclude that uh, in the field of uh, post-war architecture conservation, neoliberalism and aesthetic conservatism have already done a lot of damage. These two isms seem particularly dangerous to me in situations where one supports the, ev the other. But uh, it would be wrong to end on a pessimistic note. Personally, I believe that the effect of both isms on heritage conservation will one day uh, come to an end. Two reasons lead me to this belief. Firstly, I think that the arguments of both neoliberalism and aesthetic conservatism in disputes over the preservation of valuable buildings are characterized by uh, an insufficient professional arguments. And what is not based on expertise in conservation will eventually collapse. Secondly, it seems to me that neither the first nor the second of these isms fits well with the ideals of uh, a democratic society. Uh, neither the neoliberal erosion of the public interest nor the uh, doctrines or even sectarianism of aesthetic conservatism with its premise of one single correct idea of architectural beauty fit into such society. And if we manage to maintain democracy in Europe, in the European society, I believe that over time uh, our care of post-war architecture will also improve. I'm only afraid that uh, such uh, correction might come too late at a time that uh, at a time when we will have demolished everything thank you <laughs>